In early 2010, Jonathan Duchenis, Matthew Yayuga, Michael Buckley, and Ernie Goodnow beat up a man named Chris Meklovich outside a bar in Manchester, New Hampshire. The incident received front-page coverage in the Union Leader, the most circulated paper in the state. Yet Thomas Clark, Manchester's city solicitor, opted not to bring charges against the four aggressors. Many were sure that Michael Delaney, New Hampshire's Attorney General, would act. Yet a year after the incident, Delaney announced that he was not going to bring charges against the perpetrators. But perhaps this isn't too surprising. After all, the four assailants were employed as police officers at Manchester Police Department. A week after Delaney's statement, a few dozen individuals came together and held a pro-police accountability rally outside the Manchester Police Department. The goal? Bring to light the double standards. Some had conversations with passers-by and employees of the police department. Some held signs, and some used non-toxic children's chalk to write statements on the sidewalk and on the building itself, pointing out the clear double standards. Bullies want to censor their misdeeds. Nine present had their cameras and cell phones taken. Then the arrests started, eight in total. Adamo Freeman was the first arrested. Not wanting to aid in his capture, he went limp. He was passive. For that, he was charged with resisting. A few months later, he was told by Judge William H. Lyons, a former cop and prosecutor, that he was guilty of resisting. Adamo was sentenced to the max, 12 months in a cage, with 10 months suspended. Does this sound reasonable? Adamo appealed, hoping to make his case to a jury. He was told he'd receive a letter with his court date. That never happened. But he did receive a letter telling him that he had missed his court date. It seems a court bureaucrat either accidentally or purposefully sent the notification about his jury selection to an incorrect address. In fact, it was sent to an address that didn't even exist. Let us clarify. Adamo was found guilty of resisting for going limp. He appealed, hoping to make his case to a jury of his peers. Though he received mail from the same court at his address before and after the notification, the one about his appeal date never made it to him. Adamo went to his sentencing. He informed Lyons of the paperwork oversight. Lyons told him he couldn't do anything about it, and he told Adamo he'd have to sit the time. He's currently caged at Hillsborough County Jail in Manchester. But that's not the end of the story. Far from it. After Adamo's arrest last summer, he spent some time in Manchester doing outreach, handing out DVDs, and encouraging people to share their own stories of mistreatment from the Manchester PD employees. All of this was documented heavily on copblock.org. A couple of the people he interacted with were students at Manchester's West High School. After a brief exchange informing them of their rights, Adamo gave them a DVD and moved on. A week after that interaction, the students, Frank Harrington and Mike Pruhl, found Adamo and explained an incident that had happened that day at school. Pruhl had used a cell phone to capture on video school liaison officer Darren Murphy, a Manchester PD employee, slam Harrington's head off a cafeteria table. Harrington's sister also attended West High School, and he had taken her purse as a joke. Murphy approached Harrington and asked for the purse. Harrington said he was going to return it to his sister, but Murphy took the purse and looked through it without a warrant. Murphy then told Harrington he was under arrest, and when Harrington used an expletive to express his frustration, Murphy grabbed him, spun him around, and slammed his head on the table. Adamo interviewed Harrington and Pruhl and posted video of the exchange online. The following day, Adamo called the Manchester Police Department and West High School seeking comment about Murphy's actions. His concern? The lack of accountability. Darren Murphy was in the school the next day without any repercussions. His phone call to Manchester PD was brief. The person who answered didn't seem to express any concern upon hearing that his colleague might have assaulted a teenager. His phone call to West High School wasn't very fruitful either. The secretary merely passed along his call and the principal, Mary Ellen McGorry, who used to work as an assistant attorney for Hillsborough County, only attempted to justify Murphy's actions and deflect by saying that the Manchester police were investigating. Think about that for a moment. A grown adult initiated force. He slammed a teenager's head off a table. Is that the proper response to a swear word? And he was back on the job the very next day. Also, West High School admins blocked copblock.org from school computers and banned copblock t-shirts and literature from in the school itself. For his efforts, Adamo was charged with three counts of felony wiretapping, each of which carries a threat of seven years. He's due to have trial on August 13th. 
In both these situations, Adamo used peaceful means to point out the wrongs done by Manchester police employees. And in both these situations, he's been railroaded. <laughs> My mind is free, my conscience is clear. I have no regrets and have done what was right. And I hope people learn from these actions of mine and know that now is the time to stand up and do something about it. I'm free, the woman.